From Exxon and founding one of the founding members uh, of Exxon drummer. Uh, how many? Uh, how many does, does not know anything about Exxon? Has never heard about Exxon. <laughs> ben. Okay, everybody, go and uh, give him a little. A little bit about that for us. No. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, for me. I'm from Denmark. Exxon from Norway. And for us, uh, Norway and Sweden, they were they were early out with the Christian uh, death metal, black metal. Uh, when we started in Denmark, uh, we were kind of latecomers. So uh, my personal and my band's uh, main inspiration of uh, not the exact genre, very that's inspired too, but uh, but mainly, uh, how do you, as a Christian, who want to serve God, uh, explore? This uh, art and the passion and the energies you got in you, and what is okay, and how do you stay grounded in the scene where where Christians uh, are not really welcome? And it's uh, so uh, so I went to Oslo uh, a few times, and uh, my bandmate moved there for a bit, and and you and Peter and the guys and Christopher really been a huge encouragement. Like this, uh, there's not really words for it because it's. We, we don't even realize how much of an impact it was that actually just you going before us have uh, kept us on the path and God has been very gracious to us uh, so I'm, I'm very grateful so uh, thank you David thank you uh, well it's a Q&A with uh, David and he says that, uh, that uh, we can ask anything so, uh, so don't be shy, and then uh, it's also I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just grateful to be in the presence of uh, great guys like this. Uh, Scott Herring from a Sanctuary, Mississippi. Uh, make sure to check out his podcast on the Sanctuary International Matrix. But uh, now it's time for give it up, Dominic Dusvik. We'll start today. Uh, I've already spoken with uh, David about just sharing with you for a few minutes before we ask questions about some of the things that are on his heart, and some of the things he's been through. Pastor Bob mentioned yesterday the Extol movie, if you haven't seen it, he's gonna tell you a little bit about that. Um, this this band, Extol and, and David, have, all, have been very, very strong supporters of Pastor Bob, uh, Sanctuary International, and even in his homeless ministry uh, through Sanctuary. The, all, if you've been noticing back in the merch tables back there, you've seen some Extol merchandise. And they just donated this to Pastor Bob so that he could use the proceeds to his homeless ministry. So they've been very supportive, very strong supporters, and uh, we're very grateful for that. Absolutely. But I want to let you start just by sharing some of the things that we talked about a while ago, and then we'll ask questions. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where to begin. First of all, I'm really honored. I feel really honored to be here, to be invited to, to, yeah, to say something here. And uh, I just want to say that, yeah, Sanctuary has been extremely important for, for Extol and for also the church that we started in Norway back in 1997, uh, called Rockout Church first, and then later on the Sub Church. And I still work in Sub Church actually, so we've been around for 20 years. So, um, yeah, uh, you guys are probably the reason why we exist in a way. I mean, like uh, what Bobham uh, Sanctuary started in early on in the 80s in California. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know really what to say. I mean, I grew up in a, I'm <coughs> 39 years old, grew up in a Pentecostal church where rock it was not really popular or not really, uh, how to say it, not something you would listen to if you were a Christian. But my brother, he was, you know, into uh, like all the old Christian rock bands like Jerusalem and like Resurrection Band and and even Striper. So very early on, I remember I was probably like seven years old, first time I listened to Striper. Still my favorite band. And I remember I was watching uh, the backside of, uh, I think it was the old Black Attack, and I thought the guys looked so cool. And I was bragging about this band to all my friends saying like, Hey, they're not girls, they are actually guys. You know. <laughs> <laughs> they're really cool and they're Christians, you know. 
And I just, I always wanted to, I had the dream about doing something like that. I remember like in the, I think we were seven or eight years old, uh, maybe a little longer now older, uh, Christer, the guitar player of Xtol, and uh, Peter, the vocalist of Xtol, and myself, they're my cousins by the way, they live next door. And I remember I would bring a couple of tapes to their house, and uh, uh, I remember we went up to their be bedroom, they uh, had like, on the attic, they had their, their bedroom, and we would put on a resurrection band, uh, really loud, and we would pretend that we were playing. I was the drummer, Peter, <laughs> Peter was the uh, guitar player, or, or uh, Christopher bass player, or something like that. So, I mean, very early on we wanted to do this, and we just had this strong urge that, yeah, this is something that we need to do at some point. And, but that was not easy when you're from a Pentecostal church, uh, and uh, when no one around you really are not into metal at all. And the first people that I met that were into metal, except for my brother, was like, you know, the, the kids at school that were into Metallica, and I remember I got my first drum kit when I was 11. Uh, the first thing when uh, I came to junior high, they wanted, to, uh, wanted me to play in this Metallica cover band, and I refused. Or well, first I said yes, but after a while I said, no, I really want to play in a Christian rock band. I can't play in this. <laughs> and and uh, we, uh, so at the age, uh, actually after in night three, uh, on a Norwegian festival called Seaside Festival, uh, the band. Do you know the band called a band called Bride? Uh, yeah. yeah. They really, uh, I was a fan of them since probably 1990 or something. It was a band that I experienced myself. My brother had nothing to do with them. And they came to Norway to play right after Snakes in the Playground. And I remember I was being there and I was, I was just standing there. I knew all the words, I knew all the songs. And uh, I had like, you know, short hair. I was not, not really a metal. And I had my bright shirt that I had, you know, imported from America. And, and I was so touched, and I, so when I got back home from the festival, I was, I said to Christopher, guys, we need to start a band. So the week after that show, we started Expo, and uh, that was in '93, somewhere in '93, and uh, it was not the easiest thing to start to play, you know, a little extreme music. The first thing we did was, you know, we did some probably and bright cover songs, something like that. But later on, we started to do, you know. Because we were listening to so much uh, Christian exterior music, like Windows Rising was probably one of the bigger influences. And then later on, you had like Believer and you had like Modification that did their death metal. I think Modification was probably the reason why we started to play death metal at all. And uh, later on, we understood that okay, the, the metal scene is bigger than the Christian metal scene. We didn't know that back then. And um, uh, <coughs> so, we became a band, and I think like in 95 we, we started to become like a decent death metal band and we played quite much around Oslo. We would play all the secular festivals that we could play at or, or any show that anyone would put up, we'd play. And I just remember, uh, because we were rehearsing the Pentecostal church, they would let us practice. And the reason for that was probably that my family uh, was was the leaders of the church, many of the leaders of the church, so they let us practice. We would practice there like probably two or three times a week. And uh, if you would be on the outside of the church, you'd probably hear you know, like, like that. We didn't realize that because we were just inside, just you know, playing. And I, I, I actually uh, am very thankful for a lot of people in the church that actually uh, gave us the opportunity to do that. But on the other hand, there were quite many people in the church that thought that they didn't understand anything about what we do. Peter was, you know, we had a concert in the church in 93, and in 94, that was the first concert. And I remember Peter, the last song he would do is in Rolling, the, the deep vocals, you know. And I remember one of the leaders came to Peter, and he would say uh, that last week or two weeks before, or earlier, he had been part of like a exorcism, or you know, they would, they would pray for someone that would, was being possessed. And the way Peter's vocals sounded, 
was really similar to the voice that this woman have had when they have been, you know, like praying for them. So he was extremely skeptical towards what we were doing, and he was kind of guiding us and kind of like advising us not to do this and that we needed to change. You know? uh, that was like probably like yeah uh, that type of mentality we met quite much and uh, the older we got the better we <laughs> or the, the more we played the better or bad, or bad we got um, the better the more brutal we got as well we got longer hair you know and in 96 we probably looked like a proper death metal band you know we, we were doing the thing and uh, we wanted to we didn't want to play too many Christian shows shows we would like to you know we wanted to, to do the to play among the, the regular bands out there and for those of you that don't, that don't know we are from we were based out of Oslo just outside Oslo and Oslo was pretty much the capital of the black metal movement that started in Norway in the early 90s so many of the shows that we wanted to to play on or be part of had a lot of black metal bands there as well. And back then, it's, I mean, it's not like now. Like, there was like a black metal band playing here yesterday, wasn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> I hate to die upon, extremely good music, extremely talented musicians. And uh, yeah, it was a great show. But anyways, I mean, back then, black metal was, it was extremely, how to say it, super provocative, super anti-Christ, super anti-system. And, and the super anti power. It was like punk, but it, it had like this, uh, yeah, extremely. Uh, I'm not sure if how satanic it was, but in the sense of worshiping Satan or relating to Satan, but it was, it was extremely anti Jesus. So for us, uh, <clears throat> so for us, uh, playing in that. Uh, scene and wanted we really wanted to be part of that scene we really, really there's like this bar called there was this bar called elm street where all the bands were out with mayhem dark throne um, guys from emperor all those norwegian black metal bands they would hang out there and we wanted to do that as well i remember the first time we went there it was like in 94 i had like a modification t-shirt i think a friend of mine had a paradisian t-shirt so you know we would come in there you know being like christian kids and I remember that some guys from Mayhem would be in the corner there, and uh, at some point the guys started to spit on us, you know? And it got extremely uncomfortable. I remember Christopher had like this, yeah, someone spit him in his face, so like, you know, like, really like, you know, it was a bit scary. We were just kids, of course. I don't know, like 17, 16, 17. So we left, you know, and, but still we kept coming back, and we, we were there, everyone else was drinking beer. We were drinking coffee. <laughs> All the time, drinking coffee, you know, like they would probably have free refill and we would, you know, empty to their machine. Uh, but we had the, the heart that we had was that we we wanted to show people Jesus. We wanted to be in this subculture. We wanted to make friends there, basically. But they didn't want us to they didn't want it to be in front of us friends with us, you know, and uh, we wanted to play with this band, these bands, we wanted to share the stage with these bands, but they didn't want to play with us, and uh, the rumor, I mean, even though we wouldn't tell anyone that we are Christians, I mean, sometimes, you know, it would be like that, but people would always know, when we would come, people, people already knew, so, it was, yeah, uh, so being a Christian extreme metal band in the 90s, I think it was, especially in Norway, was quite difficult because we didn't get acceptance in the secular, in the black metal scene, which was quite grueling. Definitely wasn't really existing in Norway back then. <laughs> and in, to be like a extreme Christian or metal bands of Christians uh, in the church landscape was also quite challenging. It was difficult to find support. Yeah. And people would, you know, I always got the, feel, the feeling that they needed to, the grown-ups, our parents, you know, my uncle and aunts, they, they, the way they would support me 
what would probably be they would try to defend me by saying, yeah, it's really good that that these guys can use this music, this extreme music, to to reach people that no one else can can't reach. You know, that was their way of defending uh, uh, themselves, uh, like or defending us uh, in the church that we were part of, but also towards other churches to kind of defend it or to uh, what's the word? Um, to justify. But um, uh, I thought I was—I always had a bad feeling about that because, uh, like, seventy-five percent of the reason why I play was also because I, I just love playing death metal. I just love that brutal, extreme music. You know? So, yeah, it was hard. And we, <clears throat> in two thousand thirteen, we. Um, Recorded and we released our latest album. Have you guys heard our latest uh, album from 2014? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the same time, we released uh, Peter. Well, actually, the documentary that we made, the movie that we made, was not made by the band. It was made by Peter, the vocalist, and a producer. So, um, and they made this documentary at the same time as we were making the new, the newest album we had out. That was quite challenging as well, because I hadn't been, you know, like uh, recording at that level for a while, and I, I really wanted it to be like, you know, super top notch. And and uh, having all the cameras, you know, around you when you rehearse, when you record, uh, when you. Uh, interact, you know, when you try to establish a band again and when you try to perform, that was quite stressful. So I actually, I mean, I was a little bit against it. Okay, cool if you guys want to make a documentary, but just let let us, you know, like do this. Don't interrupt what we're doing here, you know. But I think actually the documentary became way more important than we ever imagined. And if, how many have seen the documentary here? Okay, so it's like. 40% of you. Uh, you need to check that out. It's called All Light and Shade, like one of the songs we had on Undeceived, if you've heard that album before. And uh, the documentary is, it's quite much about how it is to, or it, it describes the struggle that I just uh, uh, tried to describe earlier on here, uh, how to be Christian and not be really to not really feel support by your own and not by the people that you would like to play the music for. Yeah. All right, questions? Who has one? Come on. All right. Yeah, I don't think I can go that far, so you have to either come here or shout. What does the future of the band look like? Will you still be continued for a long time or? <laughs> of course, that question is done. <laughs> well, uh, in 2013, we released this album, and uh, Peter, he said right away when we started to make it, he said, don't expect that I would, would like to stay alive. Because he had, the, in the documentary, it describes in many ways, it described all, also his like um, mental health. Um, Condition. He's had tinnitus for quite many years. I remember he he would say that I think it was like a gig back in 2000 where he got tinnitus after a gig. The monitors were just way too loud, and he was, yeah, ever since then he's had this ringing tone in his ear. And uh, that, in combination with some issues, some family issues, I guess, but also like the whole change so you know he got married at one stage and just you know at one point he needed to be able to become a father and everything it just just became a big deal for him and a combination of all this I don't know all these things made him freak out a little bit I guess and uh, he was not really comfortable about being on stage at all not being comfortable being you know we had one rehearsal and I remember he would have like the, the I don't know the um, how 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 many dBs of reduction can you have on these earplugs? Twenty five? 
Yeah, I think he has like 35 or something in his suplex, and on top of that, he would use like this. What do you call it? Headphones. Like yeah. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. Yeah. So he, he would do that while we would re rehearse, and you could just see that the guy was not comfortable. He did not. He was just scared that something would happen to his ears, that you know that he couldn't perform. Yeah, something like that. So it was difficult, but because of that, his involvement in the documentary, I think he got really, I would say, like curious about about uh, okay, maybe maybe we should do this again. So after a couple of years, when the documentary was done and and the album was out. Then we decided, okay, let's do some shows. Let's try it out. So we, we decided to do three Christian festivals, which was not what I wanted to do, but we did it because we felt so safe and because it helped us pay some bills. And uh, like, and these three shows should be like a test, okay? Does this work? And first show uh, was quite embarrassing, in my opinion. Felt like looked like a new rehearsal stage. And you know, we have, we have been playing live since 2006. That was the last time so we had like a six, seven years old, maybe seven years uh, break. Uh, but the second show was like this huge Norwegian Christian festival, like main stage, really big thing. And that worked really well for everyone but Peter. The whole band. Uh, we had such a blast, it was really fun. I mean, it was like the biggest adrenaline gig for a while, you know. But Peter, he after, after the show, he just ran backstage and he never came out. And it was like this uh, extremely long line of people that wanted to have their, you know, merch signed or wanted to talk to Dan afterward. And I was just hoping that he would come out, but he never came out. So basically, he couldn't stand the pressure, or it was just too much. He was having a, an anxiety attack, I guess. And um, yeah, we did one more show after, and that was pretty okay, I guess. And then we had a big talk about the upcoming fall, uh, and we wanted to do a new album. And we were discussing, okay, can we do a new album? And Peter was a little bit up for it, but he was like, probably I won't be able to play it live. And in my head, that's just not inspiring. If you've done something for many years, uh, and like I've always had this huge dream, I probably think the band has followed many times my vision and the dream that I had, uh, and about what we were supposed to do, what we were supposed to do, to play and sing about Jesus, and that we were supposed to be light and darkness, which I believe that we were called to be. And uh, so I was a little disappointed if we can't go out and meet people, because like I feel the biggest reward when you put so much effort into being creative, make you recorded albums, and then if you're not able to meet people afterwards, one thing is playing on stage, you know, people, if people like it or not, I don't care too much about that, but I, I like to meet people afterwards, to be able to, you know, to have the conversations uh, that we have actually right now, you know, this is what I would like to do, you know, to interact with them, to, to share, try to share my heart, and um, we couldn't do that, so uh, Peter said, okay, I'll, I, I can't join, so Ola and I, you know who Ola is? Um, yeah, he uh, came into the band in '97. The three of us, Peter, Chris, and I, started the band in '93, and we had like a couple of other members uh, for a while. But Ula, he became permanent part of the band in '97, I guess. He actually played. We had a demo in '96 called "Embraced." Have ever, anyone heard that one? It's like wow, four or five people. Um, that demo is quite important in our history, I guess. It kind of defined the Excel sound. So, uh, if you get the chance to, uh, we we plan to release this at one point on the seven inch. It's probably gonna uh, or ten inch. I'm not sure, but it's it's gonna come. But it's, it's called Embraced, and it's also we re-recorded all these songs, these three songs for the burial album. But I think the demo sounds way better. And 
Uh, but anyways, uh, where was I? Where was I going with this? <laughs> yeah, what's going on with them right now? Why am I talking about this demo from Ninety Six? We were talking about. What's that? Ula. Yeah, I'm talking about Ula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we continued. Uh, Ula and I continued the thought of making just an album with the XO Man. But that would be only me, the only being the original member. And then we would need to define the vocals, you know. And that would be just a lot of you know, work. And, uh, but anyways, we, we continued that conversation and maybe after half a year, uh, two years ago now, two and a half years ago now, uh, we mapped and we started to write music together. And uh, uh, we had all these crazy ideas. Let's make it bl a black and blue album, you know, just really we all just weird, atmospheric, uh, and just yeah, strange black and blue album. And uh, we had all these different ideas on what we could do. But then when we started to, to, to meet and, and, and re record some demos, then I just felt that we just came up with the same stuff we've done for yeah, the latest albums. And uh, I wasn't really too much inspired to do so. So, and at the same time, I I have actually started a new band with uh, Christopher, the original guitar player. It's called Azusa. You can just write that down right away. Uh, A Z U S Azusa. And uh, I had started to meet Christopher, and Christopher had went through some really tough times, and we started to meet every. Thursday and we would sit and we would have like an hour talk about life and about God, about faith, about how difficult things can be sometimes. But, and, but also we would start to make new, new music. So uh, when Fula and I were talking about Extol, then uh, I just felt that I needed to do this thing with, with Christian first because this seemed to be very important. And since I wasn't too much inspired, not inspired by by the sessions we had, then, uh, yeah. So I told him, okay, uh, maybe at some point we're gonna do a new album with him. So, uh, but he said, I, I can't wait, I, I need to do, make some new metal. So he, have you heard of his new, uh, have you heard of his new project it's called Flesh Killer? Yep. Yeah. This, this band is gonna sound amazing. Uh, you probably have heard some clips already. It's, uh, you know, it's ex all without, me and Peter and Chris, but it, it, it has, <laughs> has all this strong extra character in it, yeah. so you probably don't like it. And so, he, anyways, he ended up doing that. We, Christopher and I, we ended up doing the new band. So the new band consists of Christopher and I and, and uh, the bass player of Dillinger Escape Plan, Liam Wilson, is part of it. And there's a German punk rock uh, vocalist. Uh, avant garde uh, girl called uh, Ellen. She's doing the vocals. So we have an album recorded, mixed and mastered. We're just waiting for the record. And then Uli is doing the flash killer together with Elisha from from uh, the burial. Yeah. So basically, that's what's going on right now. At one point, we're gonna do a new album, maybe, but I'm, I don't think we're gonna tour. Okay, we got time for another question. Who wants to? All right, you can shout or you can come over here. I can shout. Okay, it's okay. Um, you know, I'm sure you know what time you tour, especially in the states. You get a lot of kids kind of like probably looking at you for encouragement because you're the guys on the stage. Where did you guys go for encouragement while you were either on the road or recording or whatever? Where, where we, we would go for encouragement? In or yeah. We, we, yeah. we would get it, you mean? Right. Well, I, I think that would be like the, the, the spiritual connection that we had um, between each other, the spiritual fellowship that we had. That was where we, uh, that was what we, uh, I think that was where we got uh, our strength. Uh, and, uh, but I, I mean, we have our, our church back in Norway. So church, we started in 97, that was quite important for Peter, at least Peter and I, and the Pentecostal church that we grew up in, Chris was a really big part of that, so, and uh, we had those churches praying for us when we were on tour, yeah. All right, we got time for another one? Who? 
Okay? I just wanted to just say like how important your music is to me. Like, I mean, I feel like I'm connecting with my eighth grade self when I discovered like this black disc in a friend's basement with like this symbol on it and just said x and I listened to that album so many times like and it was such a it just was such a powerful thing for me and um later finding out that you guys were like a christian band and like just the high level of musicianship that was on the recording was like so so dense and so like i just felt like i had access to like this this power like i could either be a jedi or a sith and it's like these guys are being jedis you know playing this music and they're also like <laughs> yeah. so good at it too and like that was such like a like a powerful thing for me as a young person and, and was like an encouraging thing for me for so many years so just wanted to say that man sorry i'm getting a little, a little cry thank you <laughs> thanks a lot it's awesome okay was there a reason just out of curiosity for like when you guys rejoined for the new album that you went to face down records instead of like back to solid state. <laughs> no, actually, I, I think it was like, I mean, uh, there's a label in Norway called Indie Recordings. And they're quite big in Norway, not big in the world. They're doing a quite good job. Like they would have like bands, they have bands like Total Luna, bands like Enslave, have you heard of Enslave? Uh, quite many like uh, Norwegian uh, big acts they would have. And they're a secular label. And we wanted, we wanted to have a secular label. And uh, so they did Europe, but we were looking for a, for a, for a, we were looking for a label in America. And based on, they were just standing there jumping up and down. They really wanted to do it. That was basically why. And I, I all, always think it's very cool to be on labels that where we don't really fit in. Like when, you, you guys have no idea. I hate the tooth and nail. When I was a kid, I hate the tooth and nail because they destroyed the metal. They represented, you know, something that destroyed the metal. So when we played our first show at Cornerstone in 98, and they come up to us like, we would like to sign you guys, you know? I had a, it was a struggle for me, you know? I, because I was like thinking, you know, before, before that year, I was like, how cool would we be to the, to burn up with male flag on stage or something? You know? and, then, <laughs> and then after the show, they, they are really excited and would like to sign us. So, uh, so we did. Maybe that says something about my integrity. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, one but, more. But, but, the, but the, the cool thing about this, and that's probably the, the, the core and the answer to your question, is that that I believe that if people buy a record from a label where they ex they expect to hear hardcore or metalcore or something like that or alternative music, and then extol with this, you know, death metal stuff, you know, then they think that we're a little bit different than we actually are, and I. I really like to mess up with people's minds. That's good. One more. Okay. What made you guys choose the band name Next Door and where it came from? Is there a bit of a meaning behind it? Uh, actually, I think it was Christopher that read some an article. Do you know guys, now you guys know what Extol means? <laughs> exalted. To exalt, yeah, exactly. And, um, and uh, I think Christopher read this magazine, Heaven's Metal, and some article there had the word and he was curious and that, that's basically it. But, but uh, the main reason why we did this is because we would just, yeah, our dream is to use our talents to extol God. Yeah, that's it. If you guys want to come by and talk to him, he's going to be hanging out for a little while and he wants to talk to you. But this is your chance to let, you, let him know how much you appreciate him. Thanks a lot. It's a, it's a big honor to be able to call you friend and, and um, just to have you. So anyway, be sure to come by and say hello. Yeah, he wants to, he wants to say hello to you. Uh, don't yeah. be shy. Yeah, and the, the merch back here, we have the Stole merch that he's uh, he's donated to Pastor Bob. You want to grab some of that? There's only a little bit left, so grab it while it's here. Um, also yeah. there, yes. We got uh, this size of the price, so you can take off the feet. We've got one in the back there. Well, okay. Uh, you can get yeah. Absolutely. And it, 
if the shirts are too small, just make a tax shirt, just make a, <laughs> like a, there you go. whatever, just buy yeah, Be sure to do that, check out our other friends that are here with merch. We appreciate you guys coming to Sanctuary Tent, and uh, things are about to get cranked up. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you, so Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.